So this presentation is to give you an insight in how to penetrate the mobile remittance market. Why are we doing it? Who is doing it? And where are we doing it? Creating the optimal customer experience. What is their needs, both for the sender and the receiver? Overcoming the major barriers like customer adoptions, mostly covering the first mile, how to actually get a blue colored worker to use a mobile phone to send money back home. And then how to launch the remittance corridors, the first mile and the last mile. So mobile remittance offer a significant revenue opportunity. As you can see in last year, uh, we had $10 billion in revenues through a mobile remittance scheme. And next year, it's going to be the triple of that. At the same time, we're also seeing that the, the graph for the uh, pay corporate payroll is increasing rapidly as well due to regulations around in the Middle East uh, to not allowing salaries to be paid cash anymore. And that is one of the reasons what Loop is doing these days is connecting a payroll card to the mobile phone to do an international and domestic remittance. Further benefits from the mobile enabling of the operation itself. With mobile remittance services, the businesses can remain relevant and competitive for existing customers, penetrate new geographic and gain new customers, and eliminate costly face-to-face -face operations, which is the manual work today. And of course, reduce the processing cost and increase the margins. So why is the remittance market ripe for the mobile transfers? So for the sending markets, as you see here uh, on this uh, map, typical sending markets in, in the US, Europe, Middle East, large migrant and expat population, higher penetration of banking and high penetration of mobile phones. Want to access cost effective ways to send and remit money back to their home countries. The typical large populations in the receiving countries with relatives is low penetration of banking, high penetration of mobile phones, and globally it's around 2 billion people that is unbanked. And many of them rely on receiving remittances from their home country. So the model for harnessing the power of mobile and using mobile remittances is the customer experience. Either you use a mobile phone with SMS with pre-registered customers, or if you use a mobile application for a typical banked customer. And of course, the pervasive access uh, um, for the users, and of course, the most important driver, the cost per transaction. That three factors will getting the balance right and a successful remittance service. So strategy to increase customer adoption and volume. Of course, if you increase the volume and re reduce the cost per transactions, that's where you're going to find the balance. So by increasing customer base, adding education of customers and the benefits of that service, plus improvement of disbursement and cash out experience in the receiving countries, you will have an increased volume of international mobile remittances. So what do people consider for an optimal customer experience? For the sender is to initiate transfer through the chosen provider. Cost of the remittance is a main driver. Time taken for the transfer to receive. Locations of service providers, trust in service, and ye easy to use, either on a mobile with SMS or an application. The pain points, no obvious access to transfer services, and it's a high cost of transfers through regulated channels. For the beneficiaries back in the receiving countries, 
the consideration is time to take the money and to cash it out and where to cash it out is very important factors. So the pain points is complexity of opening a bank account for these people. For many of them have never been in a bank in their life. And the disbursement locations are not easy accessible. This is an example of an easy accessible international money remittance service. Um, this is the application uh, Loop have launched here in Abu Dhabi with National Bank of Abu Dhabi give you a, a screenshot of how to send the money, how to choose the beneficiary, the PIN code, and the money is sent in minutes back to their home countries, either through an MTO or through a direct bank-to-bank -bank relationship in the receiving country. So, how to get the customer on board and overcome the barrier of customer adoption? Who are the customers? We have chosen to categorize them in two. The underbanked and unbanked, mainly blue-colored people. Today, when they get their salary, uh, they go to an MTO and send the money back home because their receivers of these remittances do not have a bank account back home. They are high-frequent senders of the remittance. They send once a month and they all are unbanked. So for the requirements for the sender is cost the main driver, and for the beneficiary, convenience of cashing out in agent locations. For a banked customer, both sending and receiving is banked. Uh, access through internet banking or a mobile application, as I just showed you, is uh, very important and a requirement is easy to access and that's much another a not completely different world than for an unbanked so enrolling and educating the customers reaching the, out to the customers is to distribute population is very very difficult Visiting the customer, visiting a blue-collar worker is a much better way forward. And that is what Loop have done with our financial partners in this region and in this city with National Bank of Abu Dhabi and exchange houses. Then convincing the customer where price is the main driver. So doing it is electronically with a mobile phone, you will have to reduce the price as well. Security is very important. Do the money actually reach back home as promised? Convenience is a very big plus because they don't have to leave their labor camps. They can sit back home and send the money back with, with a mobile phone within a few seconds. And having an incentive program is very important. And then, of course, innovative and direct marketing through word of mouth, reaching out to the camp bosses and to the leaders in the camps. It's very important to have those leaders uh, adopted the service. And also, of course, addressing national and cultures diversity in the camps. To have a successful service, you really need to have a good business model for the adoption program. So the cooperation between the partners, the banks, the service providers, the corporates is, is very important. So in the onboarding, you create teams to go into labor camps wearing the uniform of the bank and to create a marketing plan how to reach and educate those people. You plan the onboarding programs at the camps in cooperation with the corporates and with the camp leaders. And you have to design a real-time registration and a transaction application. And of course, define processes for regulations is very important. 
This picture shows us an um, uh, onboarding session here in Abu Dhabi, where our people, our onboarding team, in cooperation with the bank, visit here, in this case, uh, a hotel, where hotel workers, they register them and educate them how to use the service. And the f when they have payroll day, we go into the same camps and are there for them to make sure they know how to use the mobile phone to send the money back home. So, how to get started? Um, look at the map and find where do you have big uh, populations of migrant workers. Um, Loop did that. Uh, he started a few years back here in the Middle East and focusing very much uh, on the Asian continent where we have um, cash out facilities through banks and agents. And then you have to recognize, uh, for example, Asia, where you have a low penetration of banking, uh, but you are reachable through banks, corresponding networks uh, out in the urban areas and rural areas. And it's a high penetration of mobile phones. Again, this is a picture from a labor camp here in Abu Dhabi. This is typical uh, locations where residents, where they live, and where the onboarding teams goes into the camps, um, make an awareness campaign, and then register people and educate them how to use the phone to do an international remittance. This map shows um, the ecosystem, the global remittance ecosystem of Loop, uh, based in remittances out of UAE and GCC countries. Uh, we have focused on having direct relationships into uh, India and the Asian countries, where not only having a relationship with a bank is enough to reach out and cash out international remittances, but also reaching out to the urban areas where we have, in, for example, in India, over 100,000 retail outlets for cashing out. And those areas is marked in with, with red here. The, the blue balloons here is uh, where we are reachable where Loop is integrated with a money transfer organization such as MoneyGram and uh, Western Union. So creating first mile sending corridors using UAE as an example. Uh, we have a bank here in Abu Dhabi called National Bank of Abu Dhabi and we have exchange houses and uh, remittance senders and we have payroll processors. Loop integrate with them either the bank or the exchange house or we integrate with the payroll processor who again we together go to a bank who have the financial license who can execute uh, remittance to receiving countries. Then we have integrated with typical receiving banks in main destinations for a remittance such as uh, SBI or Federal Bank in in India or Brack Bank in, in, in Pakistan and 133 banks in Indonesia, but also uh, to agent networks and MTOs. Then we reach them, the beneficiaries and the unbanked for, for their uh, locations. Now we are covering, we have covered the first mile. This page I will show you the covering the, the last mile in the receiving corridors. And we, I'm using India as an example here. Um, we have a blue collar worker here sending money back home and uh, the family member is either banked or unbanked. So we have an agent network uh, because in India by regulations by RBI, uh, you can reach out to the rural areas by using retail networks who have a um, corresponding relationship with their bank. And our partner India Oxygen have over 110,000 retail outlets for cashing out domestic and international remittances. And if the receiver is banked, 
through the same bank connectivity, we can, through NEFT in India, reach out to any bank account for an international remittance. There is over 60,000 banks branches in India and 70,000 ATMs, plus the 110,000 retail outlets we have, we are quite well covered in the Indian continent. So lastly, expanding into the full ecosystem, over conclusion, Open system is needed to encourage partnerships. Remittance corridors have to be expanded into full ecosystems, and many players have their key role. The banks, the agent networks, their service providers, and the agent network, the business correspondence. Of course, then again, having flexible partnership models will be the future. And of course, Loop is the universal payment solution and it's a core to the global deployment. Loop's universal platform can be deployed wherever needed, enabling seamless and real-time services. We are not doing anything else, only real-time. And our core system is bank rate to meet all kinds of financial requirements from banks, exchange houses, and payroll processors. And it's a white label to support partner branding and marketing. Full range of mobile payment services, either for domestic or international. Wide range of benefits for customers from security to cost reduction and convenience to enhanced financial inclusion. Brought to you by the only independent mobile payment solution provider. Thank you very much. Any questions? Hi, uh, I'm Hari from Atari Little. Uh, uh, we are strategy consultants, and it was just interesting that you showed uh, the mobile remittance number as a co-author of the M Payment Landscape Report. Uh, I just want to to stir debate. I just want to ask a simple question on how crucial the mobile part of the mobile remittance is. Actually, the way you have ex explained in building the ecosystem. The key question that I also want to ask you as well as place before uh, the group is that what we really see on the underbanked segment is that uh, mobile even though the numbers say that it's uh, underbanked and people everybody has a mobile and so on the role that mobile really plays in underbanked is really minuscule if you look at the overall end-to-end -end delivery of the money chain right the value proposition that for example a bank or a financial institution brings by way of mobile is minimal in ensuring that money goes from sender A to sender B. I would like to question as to whether for the underbank there is a real lowering of the cost in delivering these services. Okay. Very good question. I'm happy it came up. Um, first of all, um, for banks uh, outside Saudi Arabia, they have generally not been that much involved in remittances. So actually what's happening today is a bleeding because the, the blue collar workers through the bank's corporates that get their salary on a card, when they get their salary, they go to an ATM, withdraw the money and go to the exchange house or Havala to send the money back home. So the bank that actually issued the card have zero income in remittance business. So what Lube is doing is creating a completely new revenue stream for the financial institution by mobile enabling that card. So that's why we have to go into the camps with the KYC officer, register them, educate them, and then it will be a kind of a recurring business because when you've done it, done it once and you have the price right, the speed right, and the trust right, you have a customer for life. So that is the strategy, and of course, yes, the price will be 30, 40, 50% under the prices in the market today because no manual face-to-face -face interaction. It is one-time cost, which is the onboarding effort. We take that cost, we see the importance in it, but the recurring long-time relationship is very important. Other questions? Other questions? Yeah. What about the beneficiary deduction? 
when when a, cl uh, a blue collar labor is sending money cross border okay the salary is very small and he's sending the what happens to the beneficiary deduction so uh, if i understand your question uh, the average amount uh, a blue collar is sending um, in UAE and the GCC countries, in, according to our studies, is $250 to $300 every month. Uh, the, the, the cost they are paying today, if you go to an exchange house, because that's the only option they have, is 15 dirham, plus the FX, of course, so you end up with around 28, 29 dirham. We are looking at the price with FX, including everything, around 20 dirham. Uh, for that kind of uh, transactions and there's zero cost uh, for the beneficiary to, to receive this uh, f to receive the money and uh, either any cost to open a uh, kind of wallet or uh, account system uh, in their, their receiving country's bank.